And welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. So welcome to our We Choose to Thrive series, Soraya. I'm so happy you decided to join us for this interview. I appreciate that you are take, not only taking the time that you have, but you have a heart to share. So welcome. Soraya, give us a little story about your past and, um, you know, just a brief kind of story so that we understand where you're coming from in this interview. Okay, as brief as I can. So um, starting at age five, as far as I remember, I was first um, molested by a female cousin. Um, After that, I ended up being molested again from the age of seven to 11 um, by my mom's living boyfriend, who was a firefighter. Go figure, it's a safe life. Um, Following that experience, I started to blame my mom, hate my mom. I went through a lot. I just blamed her for for all of it, not protecting me. And so I held a lot of resentment um, and blame in regards to that. During that same time, as I was coming out of that, um, my grandfather was dying. And on his deathbed, he decided to tell me that the person that I thought was my father was not actually my father. And so until this, to this day, I still don't have a clue who my father is. Following that, I went into, I got date raped at 15. Um, at 18, I became domestic violence. Oh, um, married, actually. I was forced into a marriage um, and held hostage during that marriage. It was just a very weird experience, and I was um, beaten severely during that time. I got out of that and then ended up in another domestic abuse situation, um, married again. Some time later, though, um, realizing that obviously I was I had a sign on my forehead. I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that I think that once when we come up in that kind of environment, we attract what we know. Exactly, and that's you know? exactly it. And I've learned that today. So, um, and then following that, even again a third time, um, <laughs> thinking the third time's the charm. It was not for me. Um, that particular domestic violence situation happened only years ago actually and it wasn't physical it was it was verbal mm-hmm. um but i got out of that really quickly that's the 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 bulk of it in a nutshell <laughs> well i i understand and i also understand that sometimes when we grow up from a young age in an environment where that is kind of the norm we seem to attract the things that that we we know mm-hmm. and and because of that, a lot of times we live with a lot of shame as we grow into adulthood. And so what are you doing now? I know you're doing some major things. Um, what did you do to start your healing journey? What decisions did you have to make and where are you? Okay, so first, um, I was living in Atlanta at the time and I had found myself starting to journal. Um, I don't even know why. Just all of a sudden, it was grief were being downloaded. And so I started to write them out. And so ultimately I moved back to Ohio, which is where I'm from. Now I live in Vegas. And then I ended up moving to Vegas. And I just heard like this still small voice that said this, this people need to see this. And so what ended up happening was I turned into that journal into a book. Um, but it was hard for me because I was still, I was still in the victim role. I was still in the victim mentality. And it's kind of difficult. And then I was, I went to a church. Um, I I don't even know how I got to the church. I hadn't set on going to that church. I actually set on going to a different church. Somehow I ended at this other church and it was the best thing that had ever happened to me. Um, because that's, that's where God got a hold of me and told me it's not about you. And that was the changing moment for me when I realized it wasn't about me and everything that I had gone through wasn't about me. I was just a vessel in it all. And so the book came out, um, I started to understand forgiveness and started to, you know, continue writing and started to speak behind the book um, and things like that and started to talk to people and people from across the country started to reach out to me 
after reading the book and you know it just it grew like I didn't even understand uh, it was amazing beyond my understanding um and so that that was the first step in just releasing it um out of me because I had been stuffing for so long I had become the queen of suffering <laughs> <laughs> and so um and so now I um since that was in 2012 and so since then um any platform that I can get a hold of I'm on it to talk about you know what it is that happened to me and how you can get through it and how to not suffer in silence. So right now I'm a, I run a nonprofit organization that does exactly that. Um, I'm actually in the process right now. Um, you caught me on one of my meetings earlier of collaborating with a few other nonprofits to, to form this big coalition out here um, where we focus on the um, and traumas. And so I have that. I haven't really been writing much, but those are the things that I'm doing. Um, and that's so other than journaling and finding um, a church that spoke to your heart, were there any other resources that you tapped into? You know what, it's funny, I actually did. You know, I know a lot of people that did counseling, and I did counseling a long time ago, but it never worked for me, per se. Like, I just, I always felt like the things that they were saying to me, I already knew. Like, I, okay, I, that's Keisha. Like, I know that already. It doesn't speak to me, yeah. You know? Right. It wasn't until I got to church that church is what did it for me. God is what did it for me. Um, everybody's story is different. Everybody's story is going to be different. But for me, it was God. It was understanding forgiveness. It was understanding love because I hadn't loved me. I didn't even like me. So understanding love and realizing his unconditional love for me, it blew my mind. And I, and I, I had to look back and see that through all of that, he had his hand on me the whole time because I could have been dead many times. Death tried to come for me many times. Neither time would he let it be so. And so in understanding that and, and having the mask removed and being able to see that that's what was happening because he had me here for a greater good changed me completely. And so that's what it's all about. You know, that's what worked for me. And so you, you've come to love to learn or to love yourself, mm -hmm. which is one of the first and foremost. We can't love ourselves. Nobody else will. Nobody else will. And also forgiveness. Yep. That's huge for me. That is that is the mantra that I stand up. Forgiveness is huge. When I went to that church, one of the very first things that I heard, and you probably heard me say this before, is that harboring unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Mm -hmm. That is what that statement that the pastor made on that day dropped me to the floor, literally, literally to the floor. And I stayed on the floor, bawling, just bawling, bawling, bawling. And that changed my, that one statement changed my life. Yes. And, you know, forgiveness we do for first and foremost for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, whether the, the person that that you are forgiving, the persons that you're forgiving ever feel or care or whatever, it does not matter. It's the fact that we did it for ourselves and what we need to do because that's part of the wellness and part of the thriving that we've been talking about. This we choose to thrive, it is a choice. It is a choice. And I think almost every one of us that have been on this journey have had those dark moments where we weren't so sure we were going to live, you know, <laughs> or even making the choice to live, yeah. you know. So what words of advice would you care to share with somebody that's been through it, they're just to that point where they know that they have a choice to make and they want to, they want to get better, but they, they're not so sure just how to go about doing it? I would say first and foremost, choose life. Choose life and all that that encompasses because the Bible said that God came to give us life and give it more abundantly. And that's for everybody. It's not just for one individual over the other. That's for all of us. We all get to partake in that. And so I would say to choose that. Um, I would also say in regards to forgiveness um, and choosing to thrive behind it, releasing them is releasing you. Mm -hmm. That's what it equals. Releasing them equals releasing you. And so, right. so in order to be able to heal and get past the things of your past, you have to release them. You have to release you. And you have to be able to forgive them and forgive yourself and move past it. Um, healing is a, is a journey. It's not going to happen overnight. 
And there's always triggers. Yeah, there are always triggers, and you have to be mindful of those triggers and understand what they are so that when they come, when you're faced with them, you know how to conquer them. One of the things that I talked recently about in a support group, um, I run support groups now, and one of the things that we just did was conquering, being more than a conqueror. And it came from a biblical standpoint, but it doesn't even have to remain there. We talk, Everybody's heard about the story of David and Goliath. Everybody heard that story, no matter what religious belief you have. Um, David not only killed the giant with the stone, but he went a step further and cut the giant's head off. And that's how we have to be in this. We, In order to heal and to grow and to thrive, we have to not only slay the giant, we have to cut its head off. <laughs> Once the head is disconnected Beautiful. from the body, there's no more life. It's right. Gone. Right. And that's what we have to do. In order to thrive, we have to cut the giant's head off. It's just that simple. That couldn't have been better said. That's very cool. So tell us, um, you mentioned at the first of the conversation, some of the things that you're doing. Um, tell us a little more detail about that. And then when the call's over, you can send us a link to some of the things that, you know, for those that are in your area. Okay. <clears throat> So WATCH is the name of my organization, which stands for Why Are the Children Hurting? Um, and it's not just a children in perspective of, of age, it's everybody, we're all children. Um, and so what we focus on is bridging the gap for burdened hearts. That's our motto. And we focus on ending suffering in silence because not one of us goes through what we go through alone. Trust me, there's somebody else out there who's gone through or is going through what you're going through. And so there is someone out there to understand. Um, we really focus on healing. Healing is huge. You have to heal in order to live. Don't just exist in this world. Live. You only get one shot at this. And so we've done enough existing. It's time to thrive. It's time mm -hmm. to heal. And so that's the whole goal. The whole goal is to be able to put those things that are in the past in the past, they happen because they happen, um, and and it's just that simple. And one of the things I've learned is that we need to we. It comes a time where if you're choosing to thrive, that you have to stand on your story instead of in your story. Okay. And you, okay. it's so about making choices. And which would you? It's a choice of living this life in fullness and richness and joy, or living it like you're crawling on the on the ground you know, just barely being able to take my, which is more, ha which is the better for you. And, you know, the choice to live with joy and happiness and to be thriving is exactly where we need to be. Yeah, it's so funny that you say that because on Sunday, my pastor was preaching about that in the, in the Bible. It says, God came to give us fullness of joy, period. Fullness of joy, fullness of joy. Don't let anybody steal that from you. Right. Don't let anybody steal that from you. And your past is gone. It's gone. It's gone. It happened. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. It is the past. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. yeah. Thank you so much for being on this interview. And, and you were part of our book, our We Choose to Thrive book. We're starting a new series um, by popular demand. <laughs> we're, we're starting the next in the series. And we're also doing some pretty cool things that will include you in um, coming up. There's a big movement we're putting together. Okay. And um, we will include you in that. Awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Very good. And thank you so much for taking the time. Indeed. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. 
also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.